a child in this school, one Chabulani Solomon Kampala, who has been a student since senior one and is in senior four. I am not an OB of this school, but my grandfather is an OB and my father is an OB of this school. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and fellow parents, I'll be very brief. Uh, my two issues, one is on discipline and another is on equality. Now, I'm very glad that Mr. Headmaster mentioned it in his uh, opening remarks that we must speak, and therefore speak, I will. Uh, and second, I want to thank the chairperson of uh, SMACOBA who mentioned that discipline does not only relate to students, it relates to we, the parents, and indeed to you, the teachers and the administration. Uh, Mr. Chairman and fellow parents, on the 21st of last month, we woke up to disturbing news. The headline was, Smart suspends Bobby Wine's son of a drug abuse, confirms headmaster. Now this was in Nile Post, it was in Galaxy News, it was in Spire News, it was even in Daily Monitor. And they were quoting you, Mr. Headmaster, having given an interview to the extent that my son was caught with drugs in the school. As a parent, it was very depressing. And I believe to fellow parents, it was very disturbing. Um, I thought, much as I have access to the media, I thought the moral thing to do was to raise this issue on this platform because this is the ideal platform to raise it. I will mention that for all the years my child has been a student here, I have never attended or even addressed the AGM because I was always politely requested not to attend in order not to cause what they call unnecessary attention. I thought it important because like every other parent, I love my child and I want to protect my child, even protect him from himself. Mr. Master and our fellow parents, to take us a little back, allow me to lay these facts there. That young man had been reporting to me a pattern of segregation and targeting on him. As you all parents know, sometimes children lie. So I did not give the young man attention. We raise our children to be leaders. And so my young man always hoped to stand for an elective position in his school. But this one day when he came back home crying for the holiday and told me that he could not run for a prefectorial post in his school because the headmaster had blocked him for running for an election, it was disturbing. Now, when all this issue came up, I have spoken to my son somehow and informed me that as the pattern has been going on, this time he had been set up and drugs had been put in his unlocked suitcase and under his bed. I did not believe it at first. Not that I believe it now, but because I want answers and I believe all other parents I want answers. So I was summoned for a meeting with the headmaster and the team from the school. We sat. I took this opportunity to raise all these matters to you, Mr. Headmaster. Of course, I requested that this security remain uh, in the headmaster's office. I'm only raising this because it was apparently brought to the media by the headmaster. I brought the matter of my son being blocked against running, and these are the reasons I was given, and I want to quote you, Mr. Headmaster. The first reason, Mr. Headmaster, he told me that for a child to be a leader in this school, a child must be an A student, not an average student like my son. That was you, Mr. Headmaster. The second reason I was given for my son not running for leadership in this school is that students that are overly popular are not allowed to run for office in this school because they will pose an unfair advantage to their contemporaries. Now that was disturbing. However, that was not the reason why I had come for that meeting. The reason why I had come to that, for that meeting is because I had been informed by you, Mr. Headmaster, that my child had been found with drugs in the school. And yes, I mentioned it to you, Mr. Headmaster, that when I asked the young man and those around him, he informed me that he would be ready to take all the responsibility and repercussion. But he mentioned one important thing. He told me that the dormitory is filled with CCTV cameras all over. 
So he challenged the disciplinary committee, Mr. Edmaster, that if they provided the footage of that CCTV camera, he was ready to take every kind of punishment. Incidentally, when the school administration checked the camera, the camera had been cut the day before. <laughs> Mr. Edmaster, I raised that to you, and I said the same thing, but you told me um, cameras every time they go faulty. So on that day, they were faulty. This is a school camera, Mr. Edmaster. It was very disturbing as a parent. We discussed because I am very respectful of this school. This school that I didn't get opportunity to study in, I wanted my son to study in with a comfortable state of mind. So, we discussed, we went into an understanding. Mr. Edmaster, it was your submission in that meeting on the 31st of January this year that yes you did not have any fact to expel if you could allow me if you could allow me it was your submission Mr. Edmaster in my presence in the presence of my wife and in the presence of one of the school lawyers and yourself and the deputy headmaster that indeed you did not have any fact that that boy was not being set up However, you requested us to understand and agree on a, on a middle ground. You requested us to agree with the suspension because apparently there were other children that were called, caught in some crime and they were being uh, suspended. So if my son was not being suspended, it would seem as if there's double standards. So you requested us to agree to a suspension even when there was no core part. I insisted, but my wife convinced me. In effect, the young man was neither guilty nor innocent, according to you. He was there in between. We agreed to that for the good of the school and for the good of the matter not going up there. It felt very unfair, Mr. Headmaster, but because I respect the school and I love it and my son is in love with the school, I agreed to that. It was therefore very unfortunate to see that after those two weeks, even when that young man was innocent for as far as evidence is concerned, it was quoted that the headmaster of SMAP gave an interview confirming that my son was found with drugs. That was damaging to the future of my son. It was damaging to my personality and it was damaging to my family. These are my questions, Mr. Headmaster and fellow parents. If a school like SMAP cannot investigate such a grave crime like drugs in the school, how do you confirm to us that you are able to investigate something more serious? What if a fire catches this school? How are you going to explain to us as parents? Number two, if a young man can be hounded and taunted by a headmaster because there are reports of constant taunting from the headmaster on assembly, in chapel, and personally, and a few teachers and parents can attest to that. I will also mention that some teachers were apparently expelled for being close to young man, that young man. I am informed that my son is psychologically tortured because many of the teachers fear to be seen near him for fear of the wrath of the headmaster. So, my question is, I must ask the parents, is where is the parent supposed to raise these matters? We agree with you, Mr. Headmaster, not to raise these matters in uh, the media because it would be immoral of us. I brought my son here because this is a church-based school. I am a Catholic. Like I mentioned, my grandfather and my father was here, and it's my pride that my son is here. We want answers. Answers on my behalf and answers of the many disturbed parents that saw this. And if so, it will be only moral to get an apology from you, Mr. Master. I thank you.